Malcolm family to Help Stop the Genocide in American Ghettos podcast. I'm your host, Emmanuel Barbie. Thank you for tuning in to our global network. Do me a favor, hit that thumbs up button, subscribe to our YouTube channel, and please share this video podcast with your friends. We ask that you do this because we want others to know we're here. This video podcast is available in three forms, audio, video, and as a written text in order for us to reach our audience. I cite all of my sources on my medium transcript under show and prove. I encourage my listeners to click on the link to my current medium transcript so that you can read my sources in real time and respond when we open up the discussion for Q&A. We're dedicated to discussing controversial issues such as the genocide which is taking place among our youth in our inner cities across the United States. We can't sugarcoat genocide. Although I have little to no support from people in my city in Chicago, I refuse to be ignored. Purpose to educate people, black people, African people, and others who are serious about solving black issues in America, solving African issues on the continent and throughout the diaspora, as well as to raise funds for our film project, Hood Liberator Made in Chicago, The War Against Willie Lynch Begins. I use this platform to interact with everyone on my friends list and everyone in my social groups by giving black business owners free airtime to promote their products and services. I give people in the faith community an opportunity to share the gospel of Jesus Christ and ordinary law abiding citizens an opportunity to share their special talents and skills to my listeners from around the globe. After the show, I offer my guest speakers an incentive by teaching them how to create their own podcasts and YouTube channel to help them earn extra revenue during COVID-19. I also assist people on my friends list with creating basic websites, finding college scholarships, grants, housing, and legal services all for free. Our goal is to raise $500,000 so that I can be in a better position financially to hire a professional black production company or an African production company with quality actors. Without support from the black grassroots and the global African family, I am unable to do my job. Non-black sympathizers are welcome to join us and to patronize us. But it's black people's responsibility to build it and to own it. And that's what makes this organization different from other black organizations. I'm calling on all of my Christian group members in Light of the World Inspirational Group and Christian Spoken Word Network to pray that God would connect me with people who have the means to support our film project. Pray that my revised book would get on the bestsellers list. Pray that the Spirit of God will allow our film project to get fully funded and made in Jesus Yahshua's name. I am encouraging all of my group members to do what you can to help us reach our goals so that we can move from behind the computer, starting with getting our story on the big screen and getting our Christian business up and running in Chicago. Please consider supporting our film project in three ways. They are as follows. Through our virtual store, we provide merchandise such as COVID masks, coffee mugs, posters, handbags, and t-shirts. All proceeds will go towards our film project. Two, through our PayPal page, Grakaio Chicago, the Grassroots Community Activist Institute of Chicago, is a faith-based community advocacy organization. Our mission is to eradicate urban violence in Chicago through arts, culture, commerce, and spiritual development. Donations can be made, can be used as a tax write-off 
for U.S. citizens because this is a legitimate 501c3 nonprofit organization. Three, you can also support our film project by purchasing my revised book, quote, The Solution for Black America, Reclaiming, Rebuilding, and Restoring the Urban Ghettos in America, Second Edition, which is available on my Amazon author page. I, I provide each website on my Medium transcript under Show and Prove. You can also find each website on my YouTube channel under About. If you are unable to participate on the show, no worries. When you have a moment, please watch our latest video podcast or listen to our audio podcast and leave a public comment in the comment section on my YouTube page and on my Facebook page about the topic. Most of all, please share my information with your friends. This will help get the ball rolling. Instructions on how to participate on the show. First, watch my video podcast. This is called Side A. After I finish my presentation, then I will open up the phone lines through Facebook Messenger. This is called Side B. You can interact with me in real time, either by voice call by clicking on the phone icon or by video call by clicking on the camera icon. Today's topic of discussion are as follows. The disregard for our black queens, the Biden administration spending $30 million on crack pipes, and we all we got, Gurkham trying to unite the global African family with the diaspora. Our first topic, the disregard for our black queens. On Tuesday, March 8th, 2022, the world celebrated International Women's Day. This day celebrates the cultural, political, and social economic achievement of women across the globe. However, in the United States of America, these career politicians only care about black women when it's convenient. The Democratic Party claimed that black women are the backbone of the party, yet very few of them have high positions in, the, in that party. From Breonna Taylor, Etienne Jefferson, Sandra Bland, and Rikita Boyd, just a few, just to name a few, justice have not been served for them. Notice since George Floyd how the juries are getting back on code with one another. In America, we are living under a system of white supremacy. Many blacks prefer not to acknowledge the threat against our family and our community. I encourage my listeners to go to my Medium transcript. Click on the link and scroll down to show and prove. Look for Vice President Kamala Harris' Twitter page. Then scroll down to March 3rd and let's see what's important to her. This is what she wrote. Quote, let's send the Equality Act to President Biden's desk. We must increase protection for LGBTQ Americans across the, the country. The, on, the, onslaught, the onslaught of state bills targeting transgender Americans and their families is wrong. Unquote. While stepping over Breonna Taylor, and Tania Jefferson, Sandra Bland, and R Rakita Boyd. I'm not on here for fun and games. These are real issues and many black people don't want to discuss. If you don't discuss our issues, then the same problems will continue. Where is that minority coalition? Where is that black girl's magic? Black Lives Matter was created by three black women. Last year during the protest, they were able to raise $90 million, but none of that money went to Black Lives Matter chapters. Wake up, black America. No one cares about the lives of black women except grassroots organizations like ours. The fakers and frauds make it clear what's important to them. Over here, we have a regard for black women's lives. 
there's no money to be made from our cause. No major corporations or mainstream media attention about what we do over here. This is why it's taken me 30 years to get my story out to the black masses. This is why our film project is important. If you don't support your advocates, then you will not have any advocates. The reason for this video podcast is because there's needs to be a counter voice to mainstream media. The narrative from mainstream media is that black America supports Obama 100%, but when you look at the polls, that's not the case. Over here, the grassroots community activist movement is trying to create an organized socioeconomic unit while practicing group economics among ourselves if we as a collective want to make it in America. I've been telling my members about this for three decades. We also talk about getting codified, meaning getting on one accord. Every group has an agenda except black people. For example, the Latino agenda is immigration and DACA. The Jewish agenda is fighting anti symptomism and support for Israel. The Asian agenda is obtaining resources for their community. When it comes to the black agenda, you get over 25 different answers, depending on who you ask. In Gracam, black means a socio-political identity. The most important thing we should do as black people is to support our film project. In order for us to have true liberation, we have to move the grassroots community activist movement from behind the computer to the big screen in, in order to reach the black masses. The proceeds from our film project would put me in a better position financially so that we can start building Gracayo Chicago. This organization will be membership based and we will promote gender equality by paying black women the same pay as black men in order to obtain a sustainable future for the next generation. I don't have another 30 years to waste talking to people that don't care about solving black issues. Our focus this year is to raise the 500000 and create a, pos a positive black empowerment film. The, the Grassroots Community Activist Institute of Chicago will make its mark in Chicago and in 10 African nations, in the Afro-Caribbean and Brazil. When our ancestors were released from those plantations, they were sent off with no central code of conduct, identity, or purpose. This is why many of them turn to sharecropping. Those who enslaved our ancestors received reparations. The, the grassroots community activist movement is here to fix our social problem once and for all, if given a chance. Our objective is to have a sense of purpose. Family, let's support one another and love each other, no matter our differences. The CAM is about raising the bar and holding our members accountable for their actions. Leave a public comment on my Facebook page and on my YouTube channel. Most of all, please share this podcast with your friends. This will help get the ball rolling. Our second topic, the Biden administration spending $30 million on crack pipes. For those of you who are not Aware, a few weeks ago, an independent journalist broke the story about how the Biden administration planned on spending $30 million on drug, <coughs> drug harm reduction programs, including the distribution of crack pipes. I encourage my listeners to go to my medium transcript and scroll down to show and prove, and then select the, the New York Times article entitled, Explaining quote, explaining the claim that the Biden administration is funding crack pipes, unquote. I witnessed firsthand how street drugs have destroyed black families and the black community. 
for almost a half a century. The fact that Biden, Biden wants to bring back crack into the picture is an insult and it makes me very upset that nobody from the so-called black leadership wants to call this mess out. Black liberals has an agenda and that is for black America to fail. My question to black America, how much more disrespect is, is it going to take for black people to leave the democratic plantation? The Biden administration plan on allocating $30 million uh, for clean crack pipes to be sent to the black community. For the chemi chemically addict brothers and sisters. He is doing this in the name of racial equality. These Democrats are insulting our intelligence. The new black voices of media warned Black America not to vote for this man, but they did not heed to, to this. Is, so this is what we get. This is the same man who create, created the 1994 crime bill, which gave rise to the mass incarceration prison pipeline industrial complex. The 1994 crime bill was responsible for locking up more black men in American history. 28 years later, with the help of the black vote, he became president of the United States. Now, he wants to distribute crack pipes back into the black community. I believe the Biden administration could use that $30 million to create better schools, investing in black businesses, and creating shelters for homeless, the homeless. These career politicians won't give us real Real estate equality, political equality, economic equality, educational equality. But black people can get access to crack pipe equality. The Congressional Black Caucus, the Urban League, nor the NAACP has said a word publicly. The financial elites are once again going to flood the black community with dope. Just like they did during the six, during the sixties, to make sure they decimate and destroy the last legacy of the Black Liberation Movement. Family, we're in the age of biological and chemical warfare. For example, AIDS, COVID, and Ebola is biological warfare. Crack, heroin, method, meth, and opioids is chemical warfare. To me, this sounds like a mass biochemical warfare campaign against poor black people. I am not going to read the entire article, but for the most part, when they say equipment and supplies to help enhance harm reduction efforts, the question is, how is it helpful giving out materials and safe smoking kits to people on, on drugs which can um, which they can overdose on. The article says safe smoking kits are listed as one of the allowable purchases. The grants also provide funding for disease and drug testing kits, wound care, supplies of condoms, syringes, and vaccines. The grant guide guidelines do not specify what the smoking kit should include, according to Harm Reduction International, a London-based non-government or organization, such kits can contain rubber mouth pieces, brass screens, and glass stems. And so those glass stems is really crack pipes. What the author is trying to say by harm reduction is some experts claim that it is safer to smoke cocaine than to inject it. I found another article. This, this is from Slate Magazine entitled, The Biden Administration is Paying Out Thousands to Victims of Anti-Gay Discrimination, unquote. The reason why I bring you inf 
information you won't get anywhere else is because when you come across a twisted brother or a twisted sister, you have sources to back up your claim. Family, this article is about gay reparations. The LGBT group was not enslaved, did not fa have to face Jim, Jim Crow, convict leasing, or systematic racism. The LGBT community is getting a bag simply because they were discriminated against because of their sexual preference. No challenge slavery or mass incarceration. Black people's constitutional rights are violated every day. Our civil rights are being used by other groups who have never shared our history. Rhetoric without resources is dead. Black America within our inner cities lack a strong family unit, lack strong black institutions because many of them have been compromised. This was all done by design from the financial elites. In my revised book, I discuss how we have a destructive culture that's destroying our youth and our community. The reason why there's so much dysfunction in the black community is because we have not dealt with our trauma from enslavement. I agree with Marcus Garvey. We are going to have to leave 80% of our people behind because of this Willie Lynch mentality. It is making it difficult for us to remain in America. They vote against our interests and they don't support startup black businesses like mine. Leave a public comment on my Facebook page and on my YouTube channel. Most of all, please share this podcast with your friends. This will help get the ball rolling. Our third topic. We all, we got. Gurkham trying to unite the, glo the global African family with the diaspora. We're living in a country that has neglected us. We're under a system that will not give us justice. I try to encourage my group members to become codified, but many of them are just in the group to be seen. The road, road cops that killed Breonna Taylor was not exonerated for killing her. He was charged for reckless endangerment for shooting in her neighbor's apartment. America is rubbing non-justice all in our face. All of your marching and protesting for 53 years to the same group, group or people, the financial elites who had enslaved our ancestors think, do you really think they're going to give us justice? All of these black politicians are bought and paid for and in the pockets of the financial elites. Other groups understand that they are in competition for resources. They advocate resources for their group. Notice when it comes to black people getting Resources, the theme is always about equality, diversity, or togetherness. That message is only aimed at black people. The financial elites are playing with our emotions. When we don't demand anything for our vote, the financial elites view that as a win-win for their agenda. The CAM is all about forming an alliance with our global African family. African immigrants and with our Afro-Caribbean immigrants slash Brazilians. I encourage my native African brothers and sisters who are in my African group, Gakai of Africa, and Africans on my friends list who live in the following African nations. Liberia, Ivory Coast, Ghana, Angola, Nigeria, South Africa, Kenya, Ethiopia, Tanzania, Tanzania, and Uganda. Um, we need your help. Um, I, um, you're going to have to step up if you're serious about me bringing the diaspora over to your country. Black America has rejected my vision and plan for the past 30 years. And the reason why is because of this Willie Lynch mentality. Only a small handful is on board with what we're trying to do for 
the black community. I need our global African family to help me get this ball rolling. First, explain to your family or friends who reside in Canada, Europe, or in the United States about my vision for Africa. Explain to them about the importance of getting our film project fully funded and made. Encourage them to send me a friend request on Facebook along with their email address so that I can email them specific information about my virtual Christian socialist organization, GERCAM. My, my Christian business, GERCAM of Chicago. My revised book. And my online talk show. As well as my future urban Christian film. Please leave a public comment on my Facebook page and on my YouTube channel. Most of all, please share this podcast with your friends. This will help get the ball rolling. Again, I'm not doing this for my health. I'm doing this because this is all I have left. I have a revised book that's out there. I have our virtual store. I have all the faith in the world that God would um, open up these doors for me to walk through and do all the things that he has called me to do. But again, it takes capital. Bottom line. And um, this is not for me. This is for our children. Because I want this organization to get up and running so it can be passed down. Um, this is, you know, I mean, it's going to, it's going to get worse for black people in America. Bottom line. Why? Because of the Willie Lynch mentality that we have within our culture, um, being, uh, individualistic, um, narcissist, they call it now, um, don't want to stick together, don't care about, um, the collective, that's putting a target on our backs. And that's why these financial elites and other groups call us the N-word. Because they know that we're so easy to be exploited. But the grassroots community activist movement is here. Um, this organization is based on my experience. So I want to make sure that my members would never have to endure what I had to. I want us to move forward. Um, our ancestors, we're failing our ancestors, all the um, struggles and um, progress that they have made, sacrifices that they have made um, during the civil rights era. It's like, it's in vain. Because the way, um, they didn't want it to be the way it is today with um, black America. We should be at a much better position in this uh, country than where we're, we're, than where we're at. So, um, that's why I keep doing these podcasts to get my message out there. I'm beating the drum. And I, again, I refuse to be ignored. I'm just doing the best that I can um, with what I have. But, um, Please just share my information, and again, if you're not able to participate, um, n no worries. Just leave a public comment. That's all I'm asking. And share the information. With that being said, I'm going to open up the phone lines. I'm going to wait around for about 15 minutes. If I don't hear from anyone, no problem. We'll just call it a day. But again, I am trying. And before um, the end of this month, I'm going to announce when we're going to uh, have our first um, virtual conference. I, I'm i going to try to uh, set it up. I'm working with um, the Zoom thing, trying to see how to use it and all that stuff so I can add more, add people to the uh, conversation. So that way people can, you know, see each other and all that stuff. Um, I'm just trying to do it that way if, if that's going to help, you know, uh, with this uh, fundraising thing, then so be it. 
But I'm going to try to do uh, different methods. I'm also trying to do Facebook Live with, instead of using the uh, Messenger because somehow or another, a lot of people seem like they don't know how to uh, call in. And that's fine, but i got to reach people where they're at. But bottom line, we're going to be doing different, um, using different techniques in order to try to reach our audience. We want to grow this um this channel, this podcast, we want us to be strong and all on one accord and eventually move from behind a computer because the community needs us, bottom line. And it's only those, even though, yes, uh, 80% of our people are affected by this Willie Lynch mentality, God is going to open up their eyes and change, break that uh, mentality because, again, as far as I'm concerned, this is um, spiritual warfare at its best. And so, and again, people, they really want to see something concrete. They don't want to read the book. But they want, you know, think that I'm just going to be able to, you know, start the nonprofit without, you know, uh, having the capital to pay people and all that stuff. It's just sad how a lot of our people think it takes capital. No, I'm not going to be able to get those grants now because, uh, again, we don't have that physical building. But once I have my management team on, on board, be able to be in that position where I can hire, you know, my staff, then that's when we can focus on getting those grants again because um, that's just how things work. And again, the financial elites is not going to uh, fund this film project. This is coming against their system. They like it the way it is. They like to see black people be destroyed and to be the laughing stock of America on the marching and protesting that they are like, I mean black people have been marching and protesting for 53 years and they still see that, you know, that's not working but, um, their cam is here to, um, solve a lot of these social issues if given the chance so with that being said, the phone lines are now open 